Good morning, church. It's good to see everybody this morning as we begin our worship this morning we, and we praise God for um, all the blessings that he has given us. Please stand as you are able and we will begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up this day and we praise your holy name and we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We lift up this time, we dedicate this time to you. Um, Lord, we ask that you help us to focus on you, that you that we are able to worship you in truth and in light, that we are able to praise your holy name and give you our burdens. And Lord, we lift up this day and we ask that you bless this day and that your Holy Spirit is here with us. In his name we pray, amen.
Blessing buried in the broken pieces. 
worship the Lord and this next song is an old song but it's new to this team and in this group and you know as we praise God no matter what's happening in our lives we can praise him in the good times obviously but I think it's also important for us to praise him in the middle of our storms whatever that may be
give to God by enjoying what he has given me, okay? I mean, do you really think he expects something back? Now, I know there's a lot of people at church that would not understand this line of reasoning. That's why, just to make things simple and not to cause any controversy, I like to carry what I call the little empty envelope, all right? You see, when the plate gets passed, I bloop, put it in there like that. The deacon's counting the money. They only know me as the crazy empty envelope guy, but the people sitting around me, clueless. <laughs> I win, they win, God wins. No one gets hurt because no one knows. God knows. Huh? Let me ask you a question, huh? How's your mutual fund? Hey, for that matter, how's all your funds? Ha has the fun left your funds, huh? Has your do-re-me taken a W-A-L-K, huh? <laughs> what if I told you that I knew about an investment you could make that the return would be mind-boggling? And, 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 it's, and it's promised, it's guaranteed. I know what you're saying, there's no guarantees. This one's guaranteed, okay? Malachi 3.10, so it says in the Old Testament, it says, test me, give to God, and he will give you back. It goes like this, I give this, he gives this. I give this, he gives this. I give this, up right up there. He keeps giving, I can't outgive God. How crazy is that? <laughs> Do I love him? Sure, whatever. I'm just saying, if you give, he gives back. I tithe. But just not like in the form of a 10% check per se. Let me tell you what I mean. When I go to church on a Sunday morning, they're selling donuts, I buy some, boom, that's a tithe. When my whole Sunday school class wants donuts and I out of the goodness of my heart buy a whole bunch for the Sunday school class, boom, that's another tithe. But it's not about me spending money. It's about the smile on people's faces. That, my friends, is tithe enough for me. Case in point, the church was having date nights where we could take our spouse out for an evening, and they were charging $25 for child care. Boom shakalaka tithe. But I'll tell you what the biggest tithe was. When I spent over $100 on our meal, and my wife was grinning ear to ear, that, my friend's a tithe. I, w I would like to give. I would, okay? But everything right now is just... Crazy. I mean, just crazy, you know? I mean, not normal crazy, really crazy, you know? And if after I paid my bills and took care of the things that I need and want, then I would I would consider giving something, but not now's crazy. We're, we're, we're gonna give later, we've already talked about it. I mean, down the road we'll be crazy givers, but right now it's just crazy. Yeah, I have money, that's a fact. But you know what, it's a heart thing between me and the Lord and the pastor because he needs to know what I'm giving now that we have this little building campaign going on, if you know what I'm saying. And pastor, I'd give a little bit more. I'd give a little something, something if you'd have that music minister sing a couple more hymns now and then, huh? Hey, what's this, watch this. Is that a Benjamin? I think it is. Benji likes hymns, come on. You want it? Ah, come on, pastor, do what I say, huh? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Oh, in my life, Lord, be glorified in me. I put money in the plate. Wait, wait, wait. Look what I have here. I hope it doesn't interfere. But that everyone can hear how I give with cheer. That everyone could be like me. Jazz hands. Well, good morning. Boy, what a way to start it off, huh? Yes, 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 yes. You know, I was, uh, I was thinking, boy, how do you start off talking about money? This was a good way. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about better choices, uh, kind of ending up this series. And I want to talk about being generous and not selfish. And so, yes, we're going to talk a little bit about money today. Uh, and uh, I believe God's Word has so much to say about it because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Um, and, and when we let money overtake us and uh, that consumes us, then all of a sudden we're not cheerful anymore. And uh, so people say, well, you know, yeah, preacher got up and talked about my money today. And, uh, you know, I knew he was going to do that. It's my first time at that church. But every church is just alike, ain't they? And I want you to know, starting off, first of all, God doesn't need our money. Uh, God doesn't need your money. Um, the reality is it's a matter of your heart, and it's an opportunity for us to worship. I'm reminded of the scripture when, uh, 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 who was it, um, 
I'm going to say his name, uh, Abraham, took Isaac to be sacrificed. Y'all remember the story? God told him to sacrifice his one and only son, and he got up the next day and loaded everything up and said, come on, we're going to go make a sacrifice to the Lord. They get there, the boy looks at his dad, and he says, "Uh, we have fire and we have wood, but we don't have a sacrifice. And he says, hold still, and I'll tie up your hands, and he lays him on the wood, and he tells the boy, don't worry, God will provide. (laughs) And he's tied up and laying on the altar. And y'all remember, as he gets ready to to slay the boy, God stops him, and he, he provides a ram in the thicket. But I love what he said to the servant that was with them, that was coming along. He said, you wait here with the donkey while me and the boy go over there and worship. He was calling his offering, his sacrifice, worship. What an interesting way of looking at it that whenever I give on Sunday or Monday or whenever it is that you give, because now with online, it makes it any time we want to do it, uh, it makes it easy. It is a form and an act of worship to our Lord and Savior. And so there's this opportunity we have to do that. I get it. Uh, I love the one wherever he was just in this video talking about it's crazy right now. Anybody else feel that way? It's crazy. It's never the right time, is it? Um, I remember when Angie and I were brand new, married couple. I was getting ready to take my first full-time church. I remember my mom and dad were great tithers. And I remember looking at Angie on our road trip to this new church where I was going to be a full-time youth pastor on staff. And I said, you know what? Now that we're not going to be at one of my parents' church, uh, we probably got to start giving ourselves, start tithing. And it was the first time we really had that conversation as a married couple. And Angie, I remember her saying, I don't know if we can afford it (laughs) because she was full-time in college going to be a nurse. And I'm barely making beans being a youth pastor. And uh, we, we just didn't know how we would pay all the bills and all those kind of things. But we committed at that point in time in our ride to that new church that we were going to give 10% no matter what in the very beginning. And I can tell you since then, what we've learned is I don't want to preach a prosperity gospel, guys. I don't want to do that today. I don't want to tell you that if you give God, that he'll give you more. Um, I know this. I can't outgive God. I never have been able to. I will tell you that everything is all our needs have always been met. And now we're afraid not to tithe. Because we've watched God intercede in ways that we can't explain. Not just financially, physically, lots of things. There's been lots of blessings. I've never uh, um, heard somebody after they became a tither um, say that God didn't bless them. I never heard them go back to a church and say, give me my money back. God didn't bless me. That's not happened. And so I, I want us to see that there really is blessings of God that, that we want to be careful today is not a prosperity gospel and the fact that we preach wealth, health, and prosperity. No, it's not that. Um, God uh, gives many ways and in many forms, and he blesses us in, in, in many ways. Just uh, open up your Bibles, if you would, this morning to 1 Timothy chapter 6. As I get started here, chapter 6, starting in verse 1. There's a few verses that I want to pull out of here, but I'm always careful about that. So I want to read this in context of the scripture this morning for all of us to kind of get a greater, better understanding of God's word. When we choose generosity over selfishness, he's talking now. Paul is speaking to young Timothy. It's his uh, uh, young learner, so to speak, this young preacher that's coming up, following and walking in the steps of, of Paul. And he's imparting to him much wisdom about what God has to say, about God's word, about how God wants us to live. So it's very important. I pray that each one of you that are mature in Christ have somebody walking alongside you that you can give uh, a part of what you've learned from, the God, to the, from God to them. And, and so on, they can pass that along to someone else along the road. And if you are not that mature Christian, maybe you would find a mature Christian and want to get with them that you could be like a sponge and soak up some of what God wants you to hear, just like young Timothy here. All you, all who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect. Now, the difference between that day and this day is there was servants in that day. There were slaves in that day. Now, uh, in our day and age, it's a little different. So it's a little bit tougher, I think, for our culture to understand this scripture. But let's go along with it anyway. You should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. 
Those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. Instead, they should serve them even better because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves. These are the things uh, you are to teach and, in, and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree uh, to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words and that result in envy, strife, uh, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt minds who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. This is the first hint when he says financial gain that we're going to be talking about money. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich, and they fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Let me say that again. The love of money is the root of of all kinds of evil. It doesn't say that money is the root of evil. It says for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. In other words, money is amoral. Money doesn't feel good or bad. Money doesn't tell us what to do. It's just money. It's just an object. And so he's saying those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trap into many foolish and harmful desires. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you, were made, when, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and, and of Christ Jesus who will testify before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the preparing of our Lord Jesus Christ which God will bring about in his own time. The blessed, the, the God, the blessed, the, the and only ruler, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, who lives in an unapproachable uh, light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. And then he has a little more to say here. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is uncertain. But to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and, and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in so doing have departed from the faith. And then he says, grace be with you all. I pray that God will bless the reading of his word this morning. Amen. I am so thankful. If you get to 2 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there now. Chapter 9, it talks about the sower and the seed and how basically... God supplies seed to the sower so that you will be enriched on every, in every way, so that on every occasion you can be generous. Isn't that awesome? You can be generous. You can have what you need to, 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 to share God's love, to share God's word. I, what I love about this, I'm not rich. <laughs> God's just telling me this before that might happen to me. I mean, I'm not mad if God wants to give money to me. I'm not mad about that. Are you mad about it? If God gave you a bunch of money, would you be mad about it? No, nobody would be mad about it. But in my heart, God's already prepared in my heart that if he were to do something like that, that I would handle that in the right way, that money would not become my God. He is my God. 
that I wouldn't be controlled or motivated by body. No, I would be controlled and motivated by my heavenly father, whom I'm a slave to. They call it being a bond servant. Though we are free, I've been made a slave to him because I say, God, I don't want to be free. I want to follow you. That's what a bond servant is. See, a bond servant was a slave that was freed but stayed. He was free, but he stayed. So if you got your listening guide, let's open them up. I want to get started there as I keep going. Otherwise, I will run and chase several rabbits today. It's so easy. Better choices. Choose generosity over selfishness. What are your plans? This is just a couple of questions that I want to talk to you about before uh, money interferes. What are your plans uh, in life today with money? And, and you know, verse 9, those who want to uh, get rich fall into temptation. Uh, I want you to point your eyes to the words want to. That, that little phrase, want to, there's one word that covers the two words in the Greek. And it literally means plan to. So you could read it, those who plan to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. It really concerns me today when we look at our children and we ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? When the question ought to be, what does God want you to be when you grow up? It really kills me today when we worry so much about what Every job you're going to take on is a result of how much money you can make. Because it's not about the money you can make. It's about what God did in your heart. I tell my kids all the time, I don't care what you become when you get older. Just do what God leads you to do and you will be happy. You want joy? You want to have the joy that surpasses all understanding? Be who God wants you to be. That is the most important thing. I remember growing up as a preacher's kid and thinking, man, I want to, you know, if I have a ministry, it's going to be called the lake ministry. Because at that time, I could only count five times in my entire life that I'd ever missed a Sunday morning because I was a preacher's kid. We didn't miss unless somebody died. Y'all with me? All my friends were talking and bragging about going to the lake every weekend. And I thought, you know what? When I get older, I'm going to make a bunch of money. I'm going to have a lake house. I'm going to have jet skis. I'm going to have a boat. I'm going to have all these things because that's what seems to make people happy. When all the time I didn't realize that my family was incredibly happy. That we had all we could ever want or imagine. I still got to go to the lake occasionally. I still learned how to ski. Man, I could tell you some cool stories about that. The wonder I didn't drown. <laughs> he goes on, those who want to or plan to get rich fall into temptation, a, a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And then I jump to 17. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth. I underline that. Nor to put their hope in wealth, which is uncertain. Man, I'm going to tell you, anybody that has money knows that it could be gone tomorrow. Dow dropped 600 points this week, I heard. I ain't got to worry about it much. I ain't got nothing in there, y'all with me? I just heard it through the grapevine. I guess that's quite a big deal if you got a little jack, money, whatever you want to call it, right? Money is uncertain, but put their hope in God, who is what? Certain, right? Who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Let me say it like this. Generosity kills greed. It is more blessed to give than to receive, isn't it? Amen. You know, when I was probably three, I would have argued that point. But it is a joy to watch as God uses us when we give. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Tithing today, I, I, I love doing it now. We, we raised 87, let me remind you all, I have not forgotten. We raised 87,300 and some dollars and 18 cents. I don't remember what the off dollars was. I kind of kicked myself. That's amazing in the month of December. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. That was cool. So I can talk about giving in a church full of givers, okay? It shouldn't make any of us uncomfortable. Uh, maybe you're the one that puts the empty offering thing in there. That's fine. I ain't mad at you, okay? 
Uh, we have a really easygoing morning this morning because it's easier to talk about money when money's coming in. It's not about one of those things, but it is something that we need to be reminded of, of why we give. Why does it make sense? And the biggest reason is because God asked us to. And we want to be obedient and we don't want to miss out on being a part of what God does. But generosity kills greed. I want to give you three types of biblical giving this morning. You all ready for them? The first one is tithing. And in Matthew 23, uh, 23, chapter 23, verse 23, woe to you teachers of the law, you Pharisees. He's talking to the people that were more um, legalistic in the age, in this day and age. Like they wanted to talk about um, that they were good at something. They were good at what the Bible said. Here's what they say. You give a tenth of your spices, your mint, your dill, your cumin. And now, in India, it still happens this way. Uh, people bring a tenth of their first fruit. If they have an orange tree, they bring a tenth of what it produces to the church. That's their tithe. So you might see a lady carrying in a whole bunch of oranges like this. I got it, don't worry. It's something with Mike's amp. It's going to blow, Mike. <laughs> Woo! That was a close one. I don't know what's going on. I said oranges, and that's called an orange amp. Y'all see that? That's weird. <laughs> that's just a weird thing, okay? But she might bring an arm full of oranges in there and drop them down and say, here you go. I mean, this is my tent. Or they might bring a, a wagon full of uh, grain and say, this is my tenth of what God has. Back in the day, it was easy for that. You and I, we don't do things like that in America. Really, everybody here probably gets a paycheck, right? And it's a chance for us to give a tenth. He says, you give a tenth of your spices, your mint, your dill, your cumin, but you have... You have neglected the more important matters of the law. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have pr practiced the latter without neglecting the former. It would have been better if he wouldn't have added that last sentence on there, right? But you have neglected the, the more important matters law of the law. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You see, these Pharisees were, were, were being hard on other people... Yet they were tithing, but that didn't buy them the right to talk bad about somebody else or to judge them for not tithing or to judge them for any other reason. What he's saying is you should have practiced justice, mercy, and faithfulness, but without neglecting the tithe. First Corinthians chapter 16, 2. On the first day of the week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. He's talking about the first day of the week. He's talking about the tenth. The tithe means a 10%. You know, there are, I get it, man. I, I, I'm so thankful. My wife, um, uh, she's going to start a new job here pretty soon. That'll be exciting. And, and I've been trying to listen to her health-wise a little more. She kind of understands this stuff. Um, but I told her last night, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to do more than just ride the broken bicycle in the living room. She said, that's good. She listened patiently. I said, you know, I want to do some burpees. You know, even if it's three or four, <laughs> I'm going to do three or four push-ups and three or four setups. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? And that's what she told me. She said, Rusty, that's good. You got to start somewhere. Now about healthy eating. I'm like, we're not ready for that. <laughs> I mean, there's a step-by-step -step process. Just like Maybe you have never committed to tithing and 10% is way outside the box for you. Let me tell you something. Just start somewhere. I'm going to challenge us to a, a three-month, a 90-day challenge this morning to begin to, to give God first, to begin to say to God, God, I, I, want, I want you to do something in my world. I want you to do something around me, and I want to be a part of that, God, by my giving. I'm going to tell you this. Behind every great ministry are people that are obediently giving. Man, God already gave our church all the money we need. It's just in our pockets. Y'all hear me? God's already provided it. God's already taken care of it. But it's exciting when we come together. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. Malachi 3.10. I love it how he used it in here. But let me tell you how it's really meant to be talked about. It says this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. 
Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. This is the only place in God's word that he says, test me. Test me in this and see if I won't bless you. Now, this is the part where we have to be careful. God is not an ATM machine. You don't give him 50 bucks this morning and expect to get 500 when you get home. That ain't the way it works. He says, I will bless you. And there are many different forms of blessings that come in our life. I can tell you this. God can take my, my 90% that he gives me and stretch it to the 100%. The problem is, we, in our world, we want to we spend first, save second, give God whatever's left over. But God's word says, give God first, spend next, and save whatever's left over. Y'all with me? Hello? I know it's quiet. I get it, dude. I, I mean, I, I know. But we're not lovers of money. We're lovers of God. And we love God. And, and we're grateful that God has given us so much. He will bless us that there will be room. He, he, the heavens, he will pour out so much blessing that there will be no room or not room enough to store it. I love this, Philippians 4, 19. You can write this one down for yourself. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He will meet all your needs, amen? So there's a tithe. The next one is there's free will giving. There's free will giving. This is not tithe. I love it when people try to connect tithe with giving and giving with tithe. It's not the same thing. They are two very different things. Um, Giving might, uh, like a free will giving might be you spending your time. Because time is a precious commodity today, amen? And so you come and you volunteer and you give your time. A lot of people did that when we built this building. When we came in here and gutted it and redid it and all that. There was a lot of giving that went on during that time. But it wasn't our tithe. It was free will giving, giving above the tithe. David says it like this in Psalms 54, 5 through 6. I will sacrifice a free will offering for or to you, I will praise your name, Lord, for it is good. You have delivered me from my all my troubles, and my eyes have looked in triumph on my foes. Isn't it amazing that God did something? And David said, I want to give more. God, you showed up, and I want to give more. You know, I was one of those guys, I used to be this. It used to happen to me a lot. God, if you'll just do this one more thing for me. I promise, I promise, I will never do this again or I will always do this. Y'all, anybody else? Don't make me look dumb. I know. Then there's sacrificial giving. It's illogical gift. It doesn't make sense on paper. It's a, a giving that's a result of God's Holy Spirit convicting my heart in such a way in the moment. Let me give you a good example. Last July, we had some big, strong dudes that showed up to church. We had 76 people give their life to Jesus in two different events that we had here. It was amazing. And more than that, $16,000 we sent to their ministry to help them get into schools all over the United States to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? That was sacrificial giving. I can't count the number of people that came to me and said, Rusty, God spoke to my heart and I gave. And I'm going to tell you something. Praise Jesus. I'm so thankful that you were obedient. Now, none of those people have come to me and said, I want my money back. None of them said God didn't bless me. None of them said God didn't. Do, but he's saying, test the Lord. See that I won't throw up. Acts chapter 10, 1 through 4. There was a guy, his name, uh, it was at, he was at Caesarea. Uh, his name was Cornelius. He was a centurion. He was in, a, in what was known as the Italian regiment. And he and all his family were devoted. They were devout and God-fearing. And he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. This was a guy that wasn't a Jew, but he loved God. He believed God so much that he gave generously and he prayed to God regularly. And uh, one day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who called to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? 
He asked, and the angel answered him, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Isn't that amazing? The Bible goes on to share the story that he sent for Paul from Tarsus. And Paul comes and they get together and he shares with him and shares with the whole household. And they all accept Jesus and all these people come to know who the Lord is. What an amazing thing. Uh, he was, his heart was already prepared. He was already giving. The plan was already set that I'm going to be this way no matter what. What's your plan? Here's the next thing. What are you committed to? What are you committed to? Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have, oh, sorry, that's when, I just snorted. Did you all hear that? It's when you're trying to talk and you got talk too fast and you're breathing in and breathing out at the same time. Woo! For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. They put it on themselves. My buddy down in uh, Texas, Doug Walker, he's at uh, Fellowship of the Parks Church. Angie and I went to church there. He has an adopted son, but he has a couple of other sons too, and his youngest one. I'm trying to think of his name right now. What is his youngest son's name? Uh, Mark, I believe it is. And he said that he bought him some muffins. His mom bought him muffins. And uh, he said they shouldn't be called muffins. These things are huge. It's like a little mini cake. But it's a muffin and it's got nuts and berries and drizzled with all kinds of good wholesome sugar. It's a sugar attack <laughs> on steroids. He said it's an amazing thing. And he, she buys four of those in a package. And his older son, Seth, might come in and take a little piece of one of those muffins. And if Mark sees Seth with a little piece, he's lost his ever-loving mind. You're eating my muffins. He's upset. Uh, Doug even shared with us, back in the day, I'll never forget this story, because he said even he wanted to take a little piece of that muffin and little Mark Lost his ever loving mind. And he thought, I could fill your whole room with muffins and you won't give me just a little piece? God gives us everything, doesn't he? Every ounce of dollar we have, the houses we live in, the cars we have. Sure, you worked hard, but God even gave you that job. At the end of the day, God took care of it all. And it's like sometimes we won't even give him just a little piece. But God can do, you know, we, we think if we take that whole 10%, well, look what we can do with that, or that whole 100%, look what we can do with it. But, but I would dare to say God can do more with our 90 through us than we can do with 100% through us. We just have to be obedient with the 10%. And we have to manage the 90 Psalms 116, 12, David said, what shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? It's really a heart thing. Y'all remember the story about the widow with the two mites? And back in the day when they gave their offering, they walked in front of everybody and they dropped their money in the bucket. And some gave quite a bit of money. But this lady, she only dropped like two pennies. And Jesus was sitting back with his disciples and he noticed her and he said to them, this widow gave all she had. She didn't give 10%. She gave 100%. That was all the money she had. Why? Because she was worshiping God. It was a matter of her heart. I pray that we embrace generosity, that we choose generosity over selfishness. Y'all remember the story about the boy with the fishes and the loaves of bread? That was his lunch. In his hands, that was his lunch. Jesus said, bring him here. And they come, they bring him there. And Jesus takes them and he prays over it. And, and there's 5,000 people. You see, in the boy's hand, it was just lunch. But in Jesus' hands, it was lunch for 5,000.
Bring the whole tithe, he says in Malachi 3.10, into the storehouse or the church. That's what he's saying. That there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So would you take the next step in being generous? Would you commit to a healthy relationship with money? Would you commit to take a three-month tithing challenge today? See, that's the invitation for us today. Maybe you've been doing that. You say, Rusty, I'm there. And I tithe regularly. Would you take the challenge of being an offering giver and maybe go to the next step? Would you be the one that would do the one that doesn't make sense on paper? And watch God. You see, he says, test me in this. God's saying, try me out. Try me out. Another place he says, test and see, or taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, it's quiet. You know why? Because it's scary to follow Jesus, isn't it? I remember when I gave my life to Jesus and I walked down the row. I came up and took the preacher by the hand who happened to be my daddy at the time. And told him I need to give Jesus or give my life to Jesus. The reality was, that was scary. And when Angie and I began to tithe every week, whether we were there or not, when we went on vacation, we still gave our tithe to God. Because we believe it belonged to him anyways. We look back at life and we say, man, I don't know how we made it through this, how we made it. Yes, we do. God did it. I don't know how I made it when my daddy died, how I, how I kept it all together, how I was able to preach my daddy's funeral. Yes, I do. God blessed me in that. My blessing didn't look anything like money that day. Y'all with me? In my struggle and in my relationships and in my stuff and in my chaos, chaos God has blessed me. I know people think me and Angie have a perfect marriage. I'm going to tell you this. God's blessed us. That we can make it through the strife and the struggles and the chaos and the arguments. Yes, I argue with her. She wins all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see the reality? Those are blessings in my life. I don't worry about infidelity in our marriage. She doesn't worry about infidelity in our marriage. We don't worry about a lot of... These are blessings. I could go on and on all day and, and probably not count all the blessings that God has laid on me. But he's saying, test me and see if I won't throw out, open the doors. That there'd be so much blessing on you. I don't know about you, friend, but when the more we're obedient, it's not just about money. It's about being obedient to God and his word all the way around. To reach. I tell people, God won't bless a mess. So can we let go of being like we are and be more of what Jesus wants? Would you accept that pledge today? Would you take the challenge today? Listen to me. We're not asking you to fill a paper out and say, I'm taking this challenge. We're not asking you to do that in any way. God knows your heart. Just like he knew the widow's heart. Will you take it? Will you try it? And see if God won't love you like that. He loves you anyways, doesn't he? He's already promised eternal life. He's already promised our reward of heaven. He's already given us the muffin. Will we give him a little peace? Let us pray. God, I love you and I thank you and I praise you today for your blessings. God, I pray that you guide and direct our hearts and our thoughts, Father, as we follow you with everything we got. God, I pray during this moment that, God, we would be sincere as we look to you. As we say, God, we, we love you. God, you know we love you. God, you know how crazy our life is. So, God, would you give us in this moment the strength to follow you. God, I pray that no one would be harmed. God, that it wouldn't be painful. And God, I pray that people would give out of their heart what they decide to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Not by feeling guilt or shame. But God, only because they want to be obedient to you. God, we don't know what their 10% is. 
or their 5% or their 1%. But God, I pray that you just help us to begin to follow you even if it's baby steps. So God, I thank you and I praise you today. God, today, like those fish and those loaves of bread, I pray that out of our little change in our hands, God, that you would take care of multitudes. Because God, in your hands, it's amazing what you'll multiply that to do. So God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we exalt you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. This is an invitation. If you would stand with me right now. We want to pray with you. Angie's up here too. Maybe you feel weak right now. You say, Rusty, I can't do it. It's cool. I I just want to pray with you. That God will give you the strength to follow him. Angie's here too. You could come and pray with her. Over here, I got Everett. You come pray with him. You come as God leads you right now. Would you come? Come on, friend. What can take a dying man? Raise him up to life again. What can heal a wounded soul? What can make us white as snow? What can fill the emptiness? What can mend our brokenness? Brokenness. Mighty, awesome, wonderful is the Holy Cross. Restores our faith in God. What reveals the Father's love? What can lead the wayward home? What can melt a heart of stone? What can free the guilty ones? What can save and overcome? Overcome. please come forward let's have a blessing over this lord we love you and we thank you for this day bless this offering and uh, for your service in christ's name we pray amen all right uh lots of things going on guys uh probably the biggest thing right now is friday night guys uh it, this is a this is a home run for those of you that uh have a significant other. We're having a date night here at the church Friday, February the 5th at 6.30 p.m. I mean, dinner's provided. All you got to do is show up, and uh, it'll all be done for you, so it's pretty easy for us guys. But it's uh, a marriage date night. Uh, we'll have a guest speaker, Joel Oveling, Oveling, and he'll be coming in uh, to talk to us, but uh, it'll be a great time. I think we're having bandanas barbecue and uh, uh, please sign up so we know what we'll kind of get a head count. We've got right at a hundred people planning right now. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. But uh, just just let us know, and uh, we'll set up more tables and uh, get more food, and it'll be a great time Friday evening at 6.30, so plan on that. Uh, we've got uh, adult Bible study, 6.30 here at the church on Wednesday night. I think Jeff's going to back it up, what, a half hour or something like that? Jeff? I think he was starting a half hour early, 6 o'clock is what he said. And then we said Wednesday night. And uh, there's several other uh, small groups going on right now. So if you'd like to get involved and get in touch with that, it's a way to get connected, stay connected, and uh, be part of our family here at the church. Uh, youth Bible Camp's coming up June 6th to the 12th. It sounds like it's an awful long ways off, but really not. Uh, we need to sign up by March 1st for any of the kid that's, kids, if you have kids, that would like to go in that youth uh, Bible camp. Scholarships are available for kids that... Uh, Need some help getting there, and if you'd like to sponsor a kid, check with Hillary or Rusty, and, and we'll be able to, to help those. We'd like for every kid that wants to go to camp, that can go to camp, go to camp. So don't that, let that be a hindrance to you. And then uh, February the 21st, which is three weeks away, we're having a ministry fair about how you can get connected here at LifePoint, what you'd like to be involved with, and we'd like to, you know, it'll be a great time to... Uh, Take, okay, lots of stuff going on. So, uh, am I missing anything, boss? I was just saying, whoever's got the full set of table. Okay, all right. There you go. There you go. All right, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and be dismissed this day. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. Bless each and every one that's here. Bless the ones that are viewing online. Watch over us through the week and bring us back next week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.